we've got uh, no shortage of resources on our property. The property is about 6,500 acres. The, on that property, we have uh, 1.3 billion tons identified in all resource categories. And that's creating about 1,100 parts per million lithium, equates to about 6 million tons of uh, lithium carbonate equivalent in the ground. Hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm joined by Dr. Bill Willoughby, who is the President, CEO and Director of Cyprus Development Corp. Cyprus are developing the Clayton Valley Lithium Project in Nevada, USA. Uh, Bill, great to see you uh, today. And um, if we could start things off, maybe just sort of set the scene a little bit with some figures about, you know, what is the domestic demand for lithium in the United States? And where is that demand currently uh, coming from? Where is the supply coming from? Sure, sure. Great to be with you, Leo. Uh, demand side, the uh, last figures I saw for the last quarter of 2021 were about 104,000 tons of lithium product imported into the U.S. Uh, U.S. itself has very little lithium production, probably less than 10,000 tons a year of uh, lithium carbonate equivalent. So uh, definitely there's a huge amount of demand. Uh, maybe close to 400,000 tons a year, and we're producing very little of that. The uh, uses are traditional and uh, like ceramics and glass, but also the electric vehicles are uh, definitely taking up more of that demand as we go forward. So we can see more of the demand on the available lithium imports coming to the US, that, that's a growing uh, percentage. We want to be in a position with our project in Nevada to be able to take advantage of that. Mm. I mean, look, tell us, take us through something. What are some of the disadvantages of importing? I mean, you know, the traditional models of economics would tell you that if if, if another country is very good at making lithium, you should buy it from them. Why 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 produce it domestically? Well, uh, for the U.S., I would have to say the first point of that is 80% of the lithium comes out of China, lithium imports. So we've got a supply concern there. There's also the whole uh, supply chain and being able to get enough lithium in a timely fashion. And that um, you can see the auto manufacturers like Ford, GM, uh, that's a consideration for every uh, company right now, Tesla. So definitely uh, looking forward into the supply chain. That's something that has to be considered. It's a consideration for uh, every company that's out there. Mm. And I guess also, I mean, how much does this sort of the environmental footprint of, of a supply chain sort of feed into this? You obviously want your lithium a bit closer to your end user thing. Yeah, this environmental footprint, if we're not producing it in the United States or North America, that responsibility is being shunted off into other countries. It's almost the same situation as uh, every other metal and every other product that the U.S. imports. So for myself as a responsible U.S. citizen, I want to see that production come from the U.S. Uh, We would need to take care of our own uh, business in terms of environmental impacts. I would like to see our project to be well uh, advanced and responsible in that manner. Absolutely. And to what extent is, is the government, both you know, on, the, on the federal level and also in the states, uh, in the state, uh, supporting the, the development of lithium projects in, in America? Well, let's start with the federal level. The uh, federal government, both under the current and the previous administration, have recognized lithium and other uh, strategic minerals as being important, uh, include rare earths, uh, nickel and cobalt in that category. So everything in the battery metal space is important to the U.S. and has been recognized that way. To that end, the Department of Defense, Department of Energy have announced uh, loan programs and grants, uh, something that Cyprus is looking into. But for our project, uh, we're quite comfortable in our space if we just can get our business done and advance our project in a responsible way. Hmm. I mean, it's, it's good to see that, I mean, you know, when in, in times when things are, are so partisan, this seems to be one issue that is bringing both sides together. Both both parties want want uh, lithium production and uh, you know green green energy and EVs to, to thrive in America. Yeah? Yes, true, absolutely, and we do see support at the state level and uh, federal government in that respect. Uh, we're fortunate in our respect that we have a uh, project which is well located. Uh, 
it's in a very uh, arid area, uh, sparse vegetation, uh, good location with respect to groundwater and infrastructure. So we feel like our project should be at the forefront of the projects that are out there in terms of the lithium space. What we've developed in our project is a technology which we think is sustaining, that recognizes the environment around us, um, groundwater resources, and is making the best use of our land around us. So. Mm, absolutely. Um, in terms of sort of that, you know, any any resistance to, 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 I mean, people are resisting mining in general, resistance to mining in general, but obviously a lithium project, it, it, it has a, a, a good end point that people would, would hopefully support. How, what, is, what is the feeling around, around lithium mining? Well, there are projects that are facing obstacles, and there are two in Nevada that have either cultural issues or uh, uh, threatened endangered species um, issues around them, and they are in the news. However, we feel on our, it's all by a case by case issue, case by case point. And with our project, we feel we're in a good location. We've done our baseline work. Uh, we haven't identified anything that's of real concern in terms of something that can't be medicated or moved forward. Uh, it's a, definitely a good location in terms of being something that you would equate to a brownfield sort of setting. Mm -hmm. We are next to an existing lithium operation, which is a brine producer, it is the only source of lithium in the United States. And that's a Silver Peak operation, which has been producing lithium from a brine for over 50 years. Right, right. That's got to help. Um, so just tell us a little bit of some of the details of your project. I mean, it's, it's, it's very sizable, isn't it? Yes, it is. We've got uh, no shortage of resources on our property. Property is about 6,500 acres. The, on that property, we have uh, 1.3 billion tons identified in all resource categories. And that's grading about 1,100 parts per million lithium, equates to about 6 million tons of uh, lithium carbonate equivalent in the ground. Of that, however, the issue for us and every clay deposit in Nevada is technology. Do you have the process? Do you have the resources to be able to convert that large resource into reserves? And to do that, we've spent a lot of time on our processing, on our bench scale work. We're at an advanced stage. We're at the feasibility level with a pilot plan and operation. And in that, we've uh, been able to develop a, a plan in terms of processing which we can convert that into a reserve of about 200 million tons. That gives us enough lithium in the ground to support a, uh, say, 40 year mine life, rough, producing roughly 25 to 30,000 tons of lithium carbonate equivalent. Mm, excellent. And, it, yeah. and you, you've completed a pre feasibility study, as you mentioned there. And, but um, what are the timelines towards getting a, defin a definitive feasibility study done and then, and then ramping up to production? Well, from the point we're at right now, we're into our feasibility. We've got geotechnical work ongoing. We've got processing work ongoing. Engineering studies are in terms of equipment selection and sizing are all in starting off now. We expect that by year end, we should see that feasibility study in place. Permitting should follow that closely. Uh, the permitting timeline is roughly about two years from there and construction maybe a year beyond that. So we're in the two, year, two to three year time frame. Excellent. And in terms of, I mean, going back to what our discussion at the beginning, I mean, in terms of, you know, sort of how you're going to feed into uh, future demand for lithium, uh, how, how do the numbers compare with the amount of lithium you're going to produce and the amount of lithium required uh, for the US market? Well, our concern first is our project. And that's where my focus is, is how do we make a mine that's economic and has the right environmental footprint, right uh, use of resources, for our, uh, for our location. Uh, if we can hit that uh, target of around 25 to 30,000 tons a year, at current demand, we're probably about 10% of the US uh, needs. Uh, going forward, the US is gonna need more lithium, more lithium worldwide. Uh, definitely we have in mind how we can expand our project going forward beyond that. But our, our immediate target is what we're what's on the table for the feasibility study absolutely but but the, the, you know in, in the end there's going to be we're going to need a lot more clayton valley projects yes uh us will need every project that it can get in the on the horizon if you took all the clay deposits the brines the hard rock deposit back east and added them all up we might get to uh maybe a third of that 
current lithium um, demand by the U.S. So there is a need, and uh, we'll just look forward and see how we can fill it. Excellent. Well, thank you very much uh, for joining us today for that update on the market yeah. and your projects. Uh, best of luck for the year ahead. Yeah, thank you, Leo. It's been a pleasure.